I know it's only been two days, but uh, life after Nikhil Harry, how's been looking out there in practice as far as watching? Yeah, you know, uh, once practice starts, I really kind of, you know, um, when I cross the white stripe, I'm kind of a little different. <laughs> So I really don't think about stuff like that. I just look at each player's individual rep and try to find ways to um, nitpick every rep and, and so that they understand that details wins games. And, um, you know, obviously we'll miss his production and all that stuff. And, and But, you know, once you, once you get out to practice and practice starts, um, man, you just, you know, as a coach, you just you just go, and it's the same way when somebody gets hurt, you know. Some people said that the, maybe the byproduct of Nikhil Harry not playing is maybe they can get tougher in terms of the stage to prepare for you because all they have this year is Nikhil Harry being a focal point this past month. Yeah, you know that that could be, um, you know, to try to find out you know where he's going to line up and all that stuff. In some ways, it might make it a little tougher. In some ways, it'll make it easier, you know. Because they're you know they're probably not gonna have to like be concerned with you know some de defenses predicate their coverages based upon where a certain guy lines up and I don't think they're gonna look at us and and go oh we, you know we there's a particular guy we have to stop. Yeah, you know him and Frank. Um, and, you know, we got Jordan Porter's going to play. Terrell Chapman will play. Those guys are all outside receivers, and so they're all going to rotate. Yep. Yes. Right, right. Absolutely. And, and that rule is, you know, I've just, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this new rule, you know, because you do this for a, as long as I've been doing it. And then all of a sudden you spring it on somebody, they can play four games or however many games and still redshirt. It's just weird to me. But um, I'm very thankful that we saved uh, time for him so that he can still redshirt and play in this, this bowl game. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, now that I've gone through a year with this new rule, I really, really like it. And I think it helps the kids. Um, I think it's a great rule, um, you know, because they get a chance to do something that you have on film that you can help them better prepare for going into that spring when they're, you know, actually going to be eligible to play. You know, big guys um, take time to develop. You know, the bigger you are, the longer it takes for your coordination, all of that stuff. I mean, it's even the same thing with, with rookie offensive linemen in the NFL, you know, talking to uh, NFL players. You know, those guys, even at that level, those are the last guys that develop as well up at, at their level. Uh, but what, what we've seen out of him is his, his – um, um, you know, being able to have as big as he is, he's a giant human. And just having his feet up underneath him, um, you know, when he first got here, you know, he's just kind of a little, uh, it's a little tough for those big guys with the speed and the quickness of the D linemen, especially against our defense where they, you know, they do a lot of just stuff, slanting and stuff like that. And now he's, the game has slowed down and his feet have gotten faster. And so you can tell a huge difference right now from where he was when he first got here. Yeah, you know, and it's good because you look at our offense, you know, uh, you know, Manny's going to be gone and, you know, you got a couple offensive linemen, but for the most part, all of our skill are coming back. And so, I mean, I, you know, that's what I, I told him today in the meetings was every practice, you know, and if you guys were out, out there today early, you know, I kind of got a little loud. But, you know, every, every, every second when you cross that white stripe is an opportunity, you're investing in your future. You know, and you, and you can't waste any opportunity. I don't care what bowl game it is, you know, whether it's the Rose Bowl or we're playing in the 
Coca-Cola bowl or whatever bowl comes up, man, that, none of that matters. It's, a, it's like a, man, every second you're out on the practice field, this is what I'm trying to get these guys to understand if they ever want to get to championship level. Every second is an opportunity to invest in your future. Now that's all of our jobs. And when I see people taking it lightly, I, can, I mean, as a coach, you just can't stand it. And so that, to me, that's what this whole bowl experience is about. Yeah, we're going to have fun. We're going to go down there, all that good stuff, hang out in, in Vegas. Um, but, man, they better take this thing seriously. And each guy, we're looking at every rep, every player, like, hey, man, your job is not secure going into the spring there, buddy. You know, don't think that it is on both sides of the ball. That's something, something that Herm, you know, talks about a lot, competition. And you can go out there and lose your job today if you won't practice like that. So I was just trying to get their attention, get them to understand how important these bowl practices are for their their individual future and, and collectively for our team. You mentioned Jake, uh, Manny Wilkinson has last three times for Nate here at ASU. What was the season of the program? As a, a competitor, Manny is a fierce competitor. And so you don't have to worry about Manny not being ready to play in this game. The last thing he could ever envision is him walking off his last game in college as losing a football game as the, as the losing quarterback. So um, I think it's extremely important to him. And it's also, you know, it's an investment in his future. I'm sure he wants to play at the next level and he doesn't want to go out there and lay an egg, you know, on, on national TV on his last ball game. So I think he's going to be very, very excited to play, and that's all I've seen from him is his uh, willingness to prepare for this game has been been really good. You know, still right now, he, you know, after his shoulder deal surgery, um, we're still uh, he's still in the process of healing from that, and so that's one of those deals where um, it's just like any. It's like a Tommy John surgery to a pitcher. It, there's a lot of success, but then there's times where there isn't. And so you don't know until they try to come back from it. And so we're really not going to be able to see that until he's 100% can go out there and throw 100 balls in a practice and then go and do it again and then do it, you know, two out of three days and not feel any discomfort and oh I got to sit all that stuff I got to sit out and so we're not we can't make any decisions and I can't tell you because I've never seen him kind of do anything you know and so that's where we're at with him oh yeah Tucker's practicing he's playing yeah he's he's ready to go so it's going to be like um, um, you know it's just like going into our you know, our last game, but Tucker will be, you know, starting at left guard and, and um, you know, you'll have Alex Lasoya and, 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 and Steve over there, you know, right guard and the usual lineup. Absolutely. They're, statistically, they are the best defense we faced. Um, and they're athletic, they're long, their middle linebacker is a Sunday player. Uh, the secondary doesn't back up. They just sit there and squat on everything. They make it hard for you. Um, they're, at, they're, they're really athletic and fast. They get off blocks. They're giving up 13 points a game over a 13-game season. That's, like, incredible. That's, you know, I mean, ESPN picked us to lose by 16 points. So, I mean, that's where we stand right now. And they did. Herm's friends. <laughs> friends, like friends like that, yeah, exactly. But that's that's where we're at right now, and that's that's the belief and that's the perception of how good they are. And I, you know, I don't know if you guys remember in 2012 when I was at Louisiana Tech. Let me tell you, we would have hung 40, 45 points on almost every Pac-12 team we played because we were good on offense, you know, and we we were in the whack, you know. And so sometimes teams. You know, at that the, the non-power five, man, they can build up to have a year where they could go into the Big 12, they could go into the Pac-12 and compete for the conference championship. I mean, that's man, that easy. That could happen, you know. Um, and, and Fresno's having one of those years where, you know, they could have been in our conference and easily been all the way to the end fighting for the conference championship. I mean, they're good.
Oh, absolutely. You know, he did a phenomenal job at Cal. Um, you know, we followed, I was on the staff that followed him and his ability to recruit. He had some great players there. Um, I know he's a, a hard-nosed coach. The players are always going to be tough. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna go out and recruit athletes. He's gonna get guys there. I mean, if you remember his time at Cal, there's some serious dudes roll through Cal at the time, man. And so he's, he goes out, he does a good job recruiting, and then, then he, then on top of it, so he takes that talent and he puts a good product on the field as far as execution is concerned. And I think that's where, you know, you, there's a lot of talented teams out there. I mean, you guys saw that. We faced some of them and beat them this year. Um, but he, they execute at a high level on both sides of the ball after talking with Danny. You know, they do a really good job. You know, they're, of us, you know, they're, they're going to do a bunch. You know, they're a four man front, but then they're not. Then they're a three man front. And then, you know, then they look like that, like we do sometimes. Guys flying everywhere. They try to fool the quarterback. They try to give you a two shell, and then it rolls to one at the last second. And then they roll strong to the field. And, um, you know, they, they give you looks for the quarterback pre snap, and then they take those looks away right at the snap of the ball, which makes it hard. Uh, but it also opens up holes in gaps and you just as a as a, a, a offense you just got to find them they're going to be there you just got you just got to find them you know but they they rely on havoc um and 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 slanting and blitzing uh to uh to give the offense problems mm -hmm. there's, there's extremely um you know, I tell guys this all the time. You know, I was on, I was on the the staff at Cal, and when we started Jared Goff as a uh, as a true freshman, and we went one and eleven. So that ought to tell you how hard it is when you're, you know, starting a, a new quarterback, a freshman quarterback. If 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 we are, I we don't know, um, but it's it's very hard. I mean, it's it's very hard. It's an uphill battle because all of the things that you take for granted with a um, um, with a with a with a three year starter or an experienced three year guy like Manny is you know he walks in my room and we're watching film and I go okay if they give you that look check to this got it if they give you that look check to this you start a a quarterback for the first time and he's just trying not to uh, I guess I can't say that word he's just trying to not uh, um, embarrass himself out there you know what I'm saying well, right before the ball snapped I mean a little bit of it is like this he ain't he's not thinking like Manny's thinking like. Oh, okay, yeah, boom, boom, boom. You know, like in the Arizona game when he checks to the run that scores us the touchdown uh, to Eno, you know, off of the, the look. I don't know if you're going to get that out of a quarterback that's not experienced. You know, he's just going to be trying to, oh, man, snap the ball and, and not get killed, you know.